Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is indeed 730 and you're able to watch this right here on Facebook live. We appreciate those of you who are tuned in tonight. We know that this evening you're going to be blessed by the word of God. You're going to be blessed by the presence of God because the word of God always invites and provokes the presence of God. I believe that God has to confirm his word with signs following. That's right. Whatever you're hearing taught about, preached about, or expounded on, then God confirms that word when it's in line with his written word. He confirms it with signs and wonders. So we expect that to happen tonight. I want you to get on the phone. I want you to text somebody, call somebody, email somebody. Twitter them if you have to. Amen. Hit them up and let them know that tonight is Bible study night, a chance to study God's word. We've been looking at everything else and we have failed to look in the word of God. I believe that the entrance of God's word, it gives light and gives understanding to the simple. However, many people don't meditate in the word day and night and therefore they're not like a tree planted by the rivers of living water that will bring forth their fruit in their season. But when you meditate in the word day and night, think on the word, ponder the word, amen, allow the word of God to get in you real richly. The Bible said, let the words of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another. And so that's how we are to live our Christian life. That's how we are to live this faith life. And we know this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Let's get ready to pray right now and go into, amen, the word of God. Again, we thank you for watching tonight. I know a lot is going on in our surroundings as always, amen. But again, we want to salute all the teachers out there, amen. We know that this week is Teachers Appreciation Week and all of that. We want to salute all the teachers, all of you that are giving your life to educating young people, old people, Thank God for you. Also, I want to thank God that this particular month, the month of May, is Mental Health Month. Amen. And we definitely need to take care of our minds. The Bible said, be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Also, Vanika Sharp. That's right. Vanika Arie Sharp. Amen. Celebrating 30 years of life. And so we celebrate Vanika who celebrated a birthday on yesterday. That's right. Yesterday on that on Monday was Vanika Sharp's birthday. And we thank God again that today is Deacon Bobby Gaston's birthday. So happy birthday to you, Deacon Gaston. Happy birthday to you, Vanika. And then, amen, as well as Sister Jean, did not leave out Sister Jean Drone. Yeah, your birthday was Monday as well with Vanika. Happy birthday to you. And then on tomorrow, we recognize, amen, that um, Veronica and my brother-in-law, Frankie Reynolds, will be celeb celebrating a birthday. They'll be one year older. So we send out a special shout to those May people who are celebrating birthday. And if you're celebrating a birthday in May, of course, you can chime in, amen, and let us know, amen, that it's your birthday or maybe it's your cousin or aunt or whatever, amen. Again, amen, we celebrate life. That's right, we're celebrating life. I also want to send a special shout out to Dennis Battle and Vernita Battle who will be celebrating Three years of marriage. So we send a happy celebration your way. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the richness of your word, the vastness of your word, because there is nothing that the scope of your word does not cover. Every aspect of our lives, you cover it through your word. And we thank you tonight that because of your word, we'll be empowered, we'll be enlightened, and we'll rise up to destroy the works of the devil as your sons of God. We thank you for total victory and the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. In Jesus name, amen and amen. Well, again, it is a time for you and I to look in the 
perfect law of liberty, which is the word of God. Let us go and look in the word of God. We're dealing with part four of a message entitled Supernatural Achievements. And as a subtitle, train in the secret of overcoming all things. We're talking about supernatural achievement because I think and believe with all my heart that I'm talking to a bunch of achievers. I'm talking to some women and men who are bone of Jesus bone, flesh of Jesus flesh, part of the body of Christ, the church, which is a triumphant group. We recognize that God called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are a triumphant church. We are the body of Christ. And so we were called of God to go forth and release supernatural achievements. Again, when you and I do the natural, God does the supernatural. Therefore, we can expect exploits to happen, supernatural achievements to take place in our lives. But we have to be trained in the secret of overcoming all things. Because there are going to be some stuff thrown at us. There's going to be some obstacles. There's going to be some trials. There's going to be some tests. The Bible said in the book of Job, the 14th chapter, that man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. The Bible said in St. John, the 16th chapter and verse 33, Jesus speaks and says to his disciples, he said to them to be of good cheer. He said to them in this world, you're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So we have to be world overcomers. We have to overcome whatever is thrown our way. Now let's go to Philippians 4 and verse number 13. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Notice what he said, the Apostle Paul. He's writing this letter in jail, in prison, and he's speaking to the saints at Philippi, letting them know that whatever state he's in, he learned how to be content. He know how to have a whole lot. He know how to have a little bit because he can do all things through Christ, which strengthens him. Now, in the Passion Translation, we're going to read Philippians 4, verses 12 and 13. And it says, I know what it means to lack, And I know what it means to experience overwhelming abundance for I'm trained. Here's where we get this subject from. I'm trained in the secret of overcoming all things, whether in fullness or in hunger. Verse 13. And I find that the strength of Christ's explosive power infuses me. Listen to conquer Every difficulty. So you and I have to understand that every difficulty that we face, we have the greater one, the Holy Spirit on the inside, infusing his energy, infusing his strength on the inside of us so that we can overcome. We have to understand that God wants a church that is not a crybaby, that is not a pushover. That is not a wimp that has made up their mind that they're going all the way with God, that no matter what comes, no matter who goes, who stays, who leaves, who walks away, that God is on our side. And if God be for us, who then can be against us? This is the mindset. This is the attitude that has to be in those of us who are desiring to see great things accomplished, we have to recognize that it will not be easy because the adversary is going to oppose us. Satan is going to do everything he can to stop the child of God, to make the child of God look back, go back and not keep pressing forward. But the Bible says that no man that put it his hand to the plow and look it back is fit for the kingdom of God. So once we put our hand to the task, to this assignment, we are not going to be deterred. We're not going to waver to the left or to the right, but we are going to move forward in God. Hallelujah. All right. Shout out to Wayne Evans, Jr. Amen. Good to know you're watching, man of God. 
uh, as well as Ladorius Leonard, uh, Brother Vincent Bellamy, as well as your lovely wife, Evangelist Jackie Bellamy. Good to know you're watching. And Melinda Burt. All right. Good to know you're doing well, Melinda. Special shout out to you in your recovery process and moving forward. All right. Woodrow Wilson said, you are not here merely to make a living. This is Woodrow Wilson. He said, you are here in order to enable the world to live more amply with greater vision, with a finer spirit of hope and achievement. You are here to enrich the world. And you impoverish yourself if you forget the errand. In other words, if you forget your purpose, if you forget your assignment, if you forget that you are here to make a difference, an impact, and to enrich the world, then you impoverish yourself. You make yourself poor when you understand that one of the richest men, on, a man on earth, is the man who understands his purpose, who understands his assignment. Once you and I understand, Jesus said this about his own life. He said, I am here to finish or to do the will of my father. Jesus knew his assignment. In fact, the Bible says in the book of first John, for this purpose was the son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The word destroy comes from the Greek word, which means to unfasten or to untie. So Jesus came to loose people. That's why he looked at that woman who was bowed together and said, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. So we understand we're here with a mandate over our lives, with the commands of God given to us that we must do. I must be about my father's business. You and I, we must be about our father's business. Look, it has been said you lead to achieve and to create future leaders. You see, leaders achieve. You don't follow people who are not striving to achieve something. They are leading you in a way of achievement. They want you to get better. They want you to grow. They want you to develop because they understand to empower you is to empower somebody else because your life is meant to touch somebody else's life. Your life is meant to be salt and light. Thereby, your life is to help make it better for someone else. Again, you are brought out to be a blessing. That's part of the Abrahamic covenant. So we want to create future leaders. We said to you that the Greek word for overcome it is the verb Nikeo. Amen. You know, Nike has a statement. Amen. Nike. But this is Nikeo, which means to carry off the victory. To prevail, to conquer and subdue. That's what we're talking about. When we say overcome. We're talking about carry off the victory to prevail, to overcome, to subdue, to take dominion, in other words. Nikeo speaks of Christians who hold fast their faith even unto death against the power of their foes, temptations, and persecutions. So in other words, we made up our mind that we're going forward we're not going backwards. We're forging ahead and in the midst of persecution, in the midst of trials, tribulations, in the midst of our foes, we are still going to hold to our faith. The Bible said it this way. Hold fast the profession of our faith. That's what we do as Christians. We are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but we believe to the saving of the soul. Why? Because we understand that God has no pleasure, no delight in those who draw back. He wants us to keep moving ahead. It also means to win the case. Nikeo, to win the case. It also means to maintain one's cause. Remember David? 
when he fought against Goliath, when the people were like, hey, man, why are you out here talking all this trash and doing this? David said, is there not a cause? In other words, he is a big giant boasting, defying the armies of Israel. Somebody need to take him down. And we know what David did. David confronted him. In fact, David ran towards him and knocked him upside the head with a smooth, a smooth stone and then cut his head off. Shout out to Danny Batchelor, Janie Howell and Tanika Hinton on tonight. We said that on the way, on our way to the promised land, you will be faced with drama, pain, obstacles and adversity. See, we're on our way to what? Our more than enough place. We're on our way to we to we to get rather what God said should be ours. We're on our way to lay hold of our inheritance, which basically includes eternal life. It includes prosperity. It includes amen overflow. It includes abundance. Jesus said, I am come that you might have Zoe, life everlasting, abundant life, life to the full till it overflows. Well, you're not going to get that, amen, unless you accept Jesus and then be willing to face obstacles, drama, adversity. That's what the children of Israel had to do. God brought them out of Egypt. Egypt is a shadow and a picture and a type of the world system is it, it has to do with the word Egypt has to do with to limit, to restrict because they were limited in Egypt. They were restricted in Egypt and God wanted his people to live a life without limits. All they had to do was trust in God. They limited the Holy one when they got into the wilderness. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness, of course he can. Hallelujah. It was God who had allowed frogs to be in the Egyptian camp, but none in the Israelites camp. Lice in the Egyptian camp, none in the Israelites camp. Flies in the Egyptian camp, none in the Israelites camp. In the Egyptian camp, their water turned to blood. In the Israelites camp, their water remained water. So we see and know that our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. These advers adversity, rather, these adversities will come in different sizes, shapes, and form. We don't know what the enemy will use, but we know he's going to try to use something or he's going to try to use someone. It could be coming through your wife, through your husband, through your child, the Satan will use whoever yields to him to make life uh, miserable for you. But you have to overcome. You have to understand that God wants you to walk by faith, not by sight, to call those things which be not as though they were to lay hold of the promises that he made, knowing that he spoke it. He cannot take it back. Because the Bible said he will not alter the thing that has gone out of his lips. So he swore by his own self because he could not swear by anyone greater than himself. So we can believe and trust his word to be true in our lives. Bruce Lee said this. Believe me that in every big thing or achievement, there are always obstacles. Big or small. Catch this again. Believe me that in every big thing, and I believe I'm talking to some people tonight who wants to do big stuff. You want big things to happen. Come on. You need to type that down. Say, I'm expecting big things to happen. Write that down about what you're believing for. I'm not believing for something small. I'm not believing for something to be easy. I'm expecting big things. Things to happen. Because my expectation is of the Lord. And God will not disappoint us when we keep expecting him to do it. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. 
What is hope? Hope is a confident expectation that God will do what he promises. That's what we have. Our hope is not like the world saying I'm a hoping and a praying. Their hope has no foundation. Our hope is a confident expectation based on what God said and that we expect God to do what he said. In fact, it's a confident, happy expectation. So we're confident and we're happy because God will not fail us. Listen, he said, believe me that in every big thing or achievement, there are always obstacles, big or small. And the reaction one shows to such obstacles is what counts, not the obstacle itself. That's very, very important. Bruce Lee, in other words, is saying that, hey, it's not the obstacle that's stopping you. It's your response to the obstacle. It's your attitude and your reaction to it. That's what's going to make the difference. There are all of us who ever done anything big, who ever seen the power of God. We had to overcome drama, obstacles, adversity, trials and tests. That's what makes the testimony powerful because there's a villain. Because there's something or someone trying to stop us. That's why we're called overcomers. That's why the book of Revelation says he that overcome it. All of those seven churches had something and someone to overcome. And if you and I are part of the body of Christ, we understand our adversary, the devil, is going to throw roadblocks and stumbling stuff, all kinds of stuff at us to try to make us quit. Make us doubt, make us fear, but God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. All right. Listen, remember, you are never considered great until you have to fight through some stuff and overcome difficulties. The bigger the challenge, the greater the reward. Get that. That's very important for you to get this in your spirit. Listen. You will never be considered great until you have to fight through some stuff and overcome difficulties. The bigger the challenge, the greater the reward. Why do you consider David great? He fought through some challenges. David, David's own men were getting ready to stone him. And David sought God and asked God, Shall he pursue? And God said, you shall pursue for you shall recover all. David had to overcome. Abraham, why is Abraham considered great? Because he had to offer up his own son as a sacrifice and was willing to do it. And God stopped him and said, there's a ram caught in the thicket. Offer that ram up instead of your son. Greatness always runs into difficulties, always run into obstacles, always runs into trials and tests. Hallelujah. But thank God that greatness demands that you overcome them. Hallelujah. And the bigger the challenge the greater the reward. Some of you want a great reward. Well, great rewards come with great challenges. Small challenge, small reward. Big challenge, big reward. The bigger the challenge, the bigger the obstacle, the bigger the stuff you got to go through and face. Overcoming divorce, overcoming, glory to God, somebody hating you, somebody despising you, overcoming, glory to God, being put out, being ostracized, being rejected. That's why one of the books that we've written out of the 13, we have a book called The Blessings of Rejection. Everybody, I tell the people this when, before they even buy the book, if you plan on accomplishing anything great, you will face rejection. Everybody that did great things in the word of God faced some type 
some form of rejection. Moses was rejected. Yeah, remember that? They said, who made you a judge and a rule over us? Jephthah was rejected. They didn't even want Jephthah to be captain over them. Later on, that they had to come and call for Jephthah to be their captain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jesus was rejected. He said the same stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. David was rejected. His own daddy, glory to God, had forgotten him until Samuel said, wait a minute, there's got to be somebody else left. Do you have another son or something? Amen. And then his own brothers, glory to God, didn't want him to come to the battle, man. Oh, here you are. You like a troublemaker. Rejection. Joseph was rejected. His own brothers put him in a pit. But look at their rewards. Look at their outcome after facing those difficulties, after facing those challenges, after facing those types of adversities. Look at their outcome. The rewards outweigh the obstacles, the trials, the adversity and the drama that they had to go through. Hallelujah. So we have to understand Amen. This book is a blessing called The Blessings of Rejection, Keys to Enjoying, Keys to Surviving, rather, and Enjoying Your Journey. You won't survive the journey, neither will you enjoy the journey if you don't face, know how to face and deal with rejection. All right. Listen, you and I must not have an addiction to easy. See, a lot of people are addicted to easy. If it ain't easy, they don't want it. If it ain't easy, they throw in the towel. If it ain't easy, they talk about quitting. Whatever they achieve, they want it to be easy. But we must not be always drawn to convenience. Great achievements demand sacrifice. We cannot look for a convenient way out. We cannot look for the easy way out. Amen. For Rocky Balboa. Y'all remember that movie Rocky? Rocky had to fight this big guy. He had to, there's no easy way out. There's no easy way to the championship. Whoever wins the NBA championship, they're going to have to go through great teams. They're going to have to beat some challenges in order to get that trophy. If you win in the World Series, you have to go through some challenges to get that trophy. If you win a hockey championship, if you win the tennis championship, that's why they appreciate it so much. Because they know the drama, the challenges, the adversities, the obstacles that they have to face to get that trophy to be able to say, I'm the champion. Well, what do you think? We're going to be shouting about when we get to heaven. We're shouting about the fact that on earth we went through obstacles. We went through challenges. We faced trouble. We were going through trials and tests, but we trusted God and God gave us the victory. Listen, it's been said this world can be cold and cruel if you let it. But if you look at every obstacle as a new challenge, that you are able to overcome your problems and suffering will be minimal and your achievement will be great. Do you get that? If you look at the obstacles that you face as an opportunity, if you look at the obstacles that you face as something that you are being challenged to overcome, then you will begin to call your trouble what Paul said about his. He said, this light affliction, which is but for a moment. See, all a lot of people love to tell people how bad it is. They want people to think that they going through what ain't nobody else been through. And they love to brag and boast about it. And what they don't know is they make the problem look bigger than God. And God said in his word, if you say that these that the army of Israel had to fight, he said, if you're saying that they are greater than me. How can I dispossess them? You see, nothing that you face is greater than God. In fact, the Bible said in first Corinthians 10, 13, that 
there have no temptation face, uh, face you that are taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you or allow you to be tempted above that you're able, but we are with the temptation, give you a way of escape. There's a way out. And the way out is trusting God. The way out is looking at the word and exalting the word above your circumstance. Always remember, God put his word above his name. Well, he wants us to exalt his word, to extol his word, to say like David, great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. We ought to exalt and extol the word of God. But a lot of people don't look at the word of God. They just look at their trial. They look at their test and it gets bigger and bigger in their mind. And then the devil start giving them crazy or foolish or stupid thoughts. And we got to understand that those imaginations must be cast down by the word of God. Listen, Maya Angelou said all great achievements require time. See, you must not let time wear you out. You must not allow time to get the best of you. You must understand, like I always tell the saints at newness of life, the longer the wait, the bigger the blessing. Please write that down and get that in your spirit. The longer the wait, the greater or the bigger the blessing. If you want a big, big blessing, you're going to have to wait on the Lord and be of good church, a good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord and he will do what? Strengthen thine heart. You know what Isaiah said? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like an eagle. So we wait on God in expectation that God, this is going to be real, real big. Because I waited so long, the longer the wait, the greater, the bigger, the more extravagant the blessing is going to be. Hallelujah. Shout out to Kelly Howell, Howard, uh, Prophetess Sylvia Anderson. Good to know you're watching tonight. Prophetess, we love you. Uh, shout out to Gloria Knight. Amen. Listen at Mayo Don. Mayo Don. M-A-O. Z-E-D-O-N-G said this in the time of difficulties, we must not lose sight of our achievements. You see, the Bible said about Jesus, we ought to look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Watch what it says, who for the joy that was set before him. Endured the cross, despising the shame. What did Jesus do? He had his focus on the reward. He had his focus on the achievement. He did not lose sight of what the reward would be if he endured the cross. So we must not lose sight of it. What are you going after? And whatever you're going after, you got to tell yourself. Tell every devil and praise God that God is worth it. That's why you shouldn't go after small things. Because if you go after small things, as soon as some come your way, you're going to say, well, that's all right. I don't want it that bad. But when you want something bad enough, when you really, really want it, you have a hunger for it or thirst for it, then you don't let nobody or nothing stop you. I wanted my high school diploma. And nothing and nobody was going to stop me. I wanted it. I wanted to graduate from high school. Then I wanted my college degree. So I wasn't going to let nothing and nobody stop me from having it. Then I decided that I wanted to pastor newness of life. Hallelujah. And so I'm not going to let difficulties, trials, tests, people's attitudes, people saying this about me. People saying this about my wife, that ain't gonna make, that ain't gonna make us stop doing what we're called to do. Because why? God called us to do it. And we want to obey God. And since we've been called, the word call means to be summoned out. 
God had this as part of our destiny when we were in our mother's womb. I never forget her mother said to she used to always say to me before she died, she used to always say, she said, one thing I did do right. I gave you my daughter. Amen. I birthed my daughter. In other words, she knew that she had birthed a pastor's wife. So we have to understand, amen, that you cannot allow obstacles, trials and tests. You got to know I've been trained for this. I've been trained in the secret. In the secret of overcoming all things. You're going to overcome everything. Man, that's what makes the devil back up. Because he said, my goodness, I threw that at her and she's still smiling. I threw it at him and he's still rejoicing. I threw that at her and she's still going to the house of God. I threw that at her and she's still praying. I threw that at him and he's still praising my name. I threw that at her and she's still saying that God is good. What? Amen. You need to be disappointing the devil. Make him go and flee. Because why? You are not reacting to the trouble, trouble or the storm the way he's expecting you to react. He was expecting you to quit. He was expecting you to give up. He was expecting you to say, well, you know, I not messed up so bad. I might as well quit. I hear people say that they they in, they in the body of Christ. I'm like, well, I not messed up so bad. Might as well go back to the world. Who told you that? What scripture are you reading? What Bible are you reading? The Bible says where sin abounds, grace did much more abound. We understand that the Bible said if any man sin, we have an advocate. Jesus is right there. Waiting for you to repent, waiting for you, waiting for you as a son to come back to him, waiting for you as a son to tell him, I'm sorry, forgive me, have mercy on me, God. Hallelujah. God doesn't run from our sins. Jesus, his name means savior. He shall save his people from their sins. The sin problem has been dealt with. Now you got to deal with being able to forgive yourself and being able to pay what others might say about you. No mind. They didn't die for you. They didn't share their blood for you. They didn't give their life for you. They didn't resurrect from the dead for you. Amen. If they're really saved, they're going to know how to restore you. They want you in the kingdom. They want you still on God's side. They don't want you to go back to your old lifestyle. They don't want you to quit. No, they want you to get up and go forward. Get up and try and strive after righteousness and godliness. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. You can't quit. Huh? Amen. When LeBron James make a bad play, when he miss a shot or he miss a pass, he don't say, well, walk off the court. Where you going, LeBron? I quit. I messed up. No, he get back out there and go and try that play again. Next time he might dunk. The next time it might be a great pass. You don't quit. You don't give up. You know that Satan is going to send condemnation and guilt against you. He's the accuser of the brethren. His job is to accuse you. His job is to make accusations against you. But you need to let that devil know. Wait a minute, devil. There is therefore now. No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. I'm in Christ Jesus. You might as well get out of my face trying to condemn me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Tell that devil, wait a minute. I got over into the flesh. Now I'm going to get over back into the spirit. Hallelujah. But I'm not quitting. I'm not walking away. I'm not a quitter. God called me to be an overcomer. All right. Look at Mark 10, 29 and 30. Mark 10, 29 and 30. It says, and Jesus answered. And said, verily I say unto you, there is no man that left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospel. Watch this. 
but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands. Here's the part that most people fail to pay attention to with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. You see, God said you will get it a hundredfold, but you better be ready and prepared for the persecutions. See, people don't always celebrate your more than enough season. People don't always celebrate God bringing you into the promised land. In fact, you create as you go up, more people see you because why? You step out from among the status quo. You step out from among mediocrity. You step into the greatness that God has put on the inside of you, which causes more light to shine on you. And the more light that shines on you, the more critics begin to see who you are and they'll come out and begin to persecute you. Well, who does she think he, she is? Who does he think he is? Oh, my God. They think they somebody now. They got it going on. Oh, my God. Well, they must have stole something. Well, they must have lied. Well, I tell you, I can't stand his wife. Well, I can't stand his children. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. That's right. Many of you talking about you want to be married to a man of God. If that man of God does and accomplish great things and achieve something, you will be harassed. You will be persecuted. You will be talking about. That's why in my book, Long Distance Runner, one of our latest book, Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize, I talk about thick skin. Do you know how thick my wife's skin has to be to be who she is? To get up and smile and sing to people that ran her down? To get up and smile and sing when people have misunderstood who she is? Do you know how thick your skin has to be? If you are a thin-skinned woman, there's no way you're ready to be married to a great man of God who's going to do great things. If you are a thin-skinned man, there's no way you're ready to be married to a great woman of God. Do you know how much people must talk about Sarita Jakes and Creflo's wife and Fred Price and his wife? I'm telling you, my God, can you imagine being Betty Price? My God, hearing people talk about her husband like a dog, didn't talk about her like a dog. Because people... Why? You going up. And as you achieve, persecution come out. Persecution comes out. You want more? You want a better house? You want a better car? You want better clothes to wear? Oh my goodness. Can you imagine what those women were saying about Esther when she became queen? Oh my God. And some of them wanted to be queen and they didn't make it and Esther did. Oh, the half ain't been told what Queen Esther went through. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Can you imagine what Queen Esther, the persecution that came against Queen Esther? Oh, my God. They were trying to be queen and they didn't make it. The man didn't pick her. Oh, my goodness. Come on, y'all. Let's be realistic here. Don't think all the women were celebrating them, were celebrating her. They were trying to win. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Shout out to Marshall Hill. Glad to know you are watching. Amen. So you got to understand there is a resentment toward being out front. There's a resentment toward being the lead singer. Amen. And then a lot of people want to be it. And then they, they're not lead singers. Amen. Put them out there and they nervous. Put them out there and they can't do it. But there is a resentment. Come on. Even Michael Jackson. Amen. Where, where, where had to go through a lot of criticism. Why? Because you out front. He didn't know why. People are always talking about him. You out front, Michael. You out front. It comes with being out front. There's no way I can be out front and then be surprised when people talk about me. I might as well prepare my mind for it, prepare my heart for it, get myself some thick skin and run this race knowing that it comes with persecution. 
And the more God go to blessing you, the more God go to doing stuff for you. Oh, my God. You a headliner. Who do you think people talk about? Broke people or do they talk about those people that are rich and out front? Amen. You want the kind of money Oprah got? Oh, you know what going to come with that? Oh, my goodness. Front line, lying on you, saying this about you, talking about your hair, talking about your size, talking about your shoes, talking about the way you wear your lipstick. All of that come with this stuff. That's why you got to pray for those that are out front. Pray for those that are high profile. That's why you got to pray for your pastor. Not talk about them, not join the, the rest of the group because they don't know what it's like to be out front. They don't know how many times that you could say, hey, forget it. But lives are at stake. And because of the call of God and because of the anointing of God and because that God called you to do this. That's why you're doing it. You ain't doing it because you're trying to be seen. You're doing it because God gave you ability. God gave you skill. God gave you strategy and God called you to lead. Look how they criticize Moses. Moses, who you think you are? Who, who, look, the elders did this. His own elders went against him. His lead men and the earth swallowed them up because they talked against Moses. They talked about his wife. Y'all remember that? Oh, you married this Ethiopian woman. See, didn't like his wife. Oh, shout out to Melody Hatchell. See, you got to pray for high profile people. You got to pray once you start achieving in life. I mean, we've written 13 books. You know what people say sometimes? Oh, there he go. There he go. Trying to sell another book. I tell people our books already paid for. Not trying to get something from you. Trying to get something to you. How can I help you? Amen. Be better at who you're trying to be. How can I help you achieve? Because I know this information. I got this information already. But I'm trying to put it out here so you can have it. So you can learn. So you can recognize that you're going to have to overpower discouragement. And I did. I wrote this first book. My wife can tell you. I wrote this first book, How to Overpower Discouragement, because we would go and minister. This was written in 1992, really in 1991, came out in 1992, because we would go and minister at different local churches and on, at different states and in different cities. And it would be time for us to go out after we minister out to lunch, I mean, out to dinner or somewhere with the person that we just ministered to at their local church. And a lot of times they couldn't go. And we like, what's going on, man? They said, man, I got, got to talk to somebody. Talk to so-and-so or brother so-and-so. Why? They need, they need, some, they want, they want, they said, pastor, I got to meet with you now. And oftentimes it would be something that they're going through that was discouraging them. So I said, well, people need to overpower discouragement. They need to know how to deal with it. And then I start seeing in the Bible that Jesus was the quickest of the quick. And he, the Bible said, he shall not fail nor be discouraged. So David had to encourage himself and over and over. So I wrote this little book. This little book has sold thousands of copies. It's only what, $4? Amen. But at any rate, amen, this little book is a blessing to people. How to overpower discouragement. Amen. How to overpower discouragement. So we have to overpower it. Amen. Not telling you to get it. I'm just telling you people are discouraged. And when they don't deal with discouragement quick enough, it goes into the oppression area. So God said, you need to write this. Tell them how to deal with discouragement before it goes into oppression. Now, oppression is not discouragement. Elijah got discouraged. He wasn't depressed. He was discouraged. And God says to him, what doest thou here, Elijah? Arise and eat. And he went in the strength of that meat for 40 days. 40 in the scriptures deal with trials and tests. Hallelujah. But oppression and depression, that's the money. And if you don't deal with discouragement fast enough, it goes into that demonic area. Now, that demonic area, that's where people start committing suicide. 
That's when people start taking pills and overdosing. That's when people start getting guns and blowing their brains out because not of discouragement. That's called depression. Oppression. The Bible said in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Oppression and depression is not the same as discouragement. And if I don't deal with discouragement quick enough, it can lead to depression. Oh, man, let me move on. Psalms 18, 34 and 35 says he teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand hath holden me up. And thy gentleness has made me what? Great. So we're talking about great achievements. To do that, you got to be trained in the secret of overcoming all things. My wife and I, we tell people all the time, you talking about being an armor bearer or being close to your leaders, you better get ready because they're going to talk about you the same way they do the leaders. And if you don't have thick skin, you ain't going to be able to handle it. Because you're in the limelight. The lights are on you. Hallelujah. People in the background, people ain't doing nothing. People ain't achieving nothing. Oh, ain't nobody talking about them. The moment you start making some progress, the moment you start achieving, oh, you know, you know, you know, you know, him and his wife, you know, they, they, they'll steal, you know. And we like, we ain't never stole nothing in our lives from ministry. Never stole anything. My wife ain't never stole anything. Ain't gonna steal nothing. Amen. We, we have to give account of every penny that rolls into our ministry. We have a great financial team. Amen. We have a great board. We have a CPA. We have lawyers involved with this. Why? Because we understand how important it is to live with integrity, especially in the financial arena. You will go to jail and go to prison quick. And I ain't going to prison. Amen. So we have to understand the persecutions and the great things that comes up against you, the obstacles. And you're facing your own trials, your own tests, your own situations. Plus, you're trying to help other people with theirs. And people talk about you like a dog. That's part of it. You don't get depressed about it. You do like Jesus told you to do. He said, rejoice. He didn't say get down about it. He didn't say get mad about it. You rejoice because you know it's not true. You rejoice because you know they misjudging you. You rejoice because you say, uh oh, God, you get ready to reward me big now. You get ready to bless me big now. You ready to give me some favor now. You get ready to open up some doors now because you said I get it with persecution. I get it. I get the land. I get this. But it'll be with persecution. Why? Because that persecution and everything else keeps you humble before God, letting you continually trust the one who gave you everything you got. Because you understand without God you wouldn't have nothing. God bless my wife and I. God has kept us. God gets all the glory. Amen? All right. Now let me read this to you in the Message Bible. Psalms 18, 34 through 42 in the Message Bible. He shows me how to fight. I can bend a bronze bow. You arm me well for this fight. Come on. You arm me well for this fight. You smashed the upstarts. I ground them to dust. They gusted in the wind. I threw them out like garbage in the gutter. I told you last time. Amen. You ought to throw your enemy out. Now, David fought against physical men. We're fighting against spiritual wickedness demon powers and we ought to throw them out like we're throwing out trash hallelujah glory to God hallelujah promotion coming from the Lord and as God begins to promote as God begins to establish your life and promote you from glory to glory from strength to strength as God begins to take charge and move you forward you're going to hear more and more talk, negative, ugly, 
bitter, resentful. And a lot of times it's because people are resentful of where you are and not knowing that you are not shining as light for them to envy you or want to be you. You're shining as light to inspire them to be great. You're shining as light to stretch them, to make them reach higher, to make them achieve, not to compete or to compare. You're not competing against another woman as a woman. You're not competing against another man as a man. We're not in this competing and comparing. We're in this sharing. We're in this trying to strengthen you in being the best version of you. See, nobody can be you like you can be you. I don't want to be anybody else but me because that's the only person I can be. I have my own smile. I have my own way of teaching and preaching the word. Hallelujah. Yes, I listen to other people, but I don't preach and teach like them. I do this the way God has called me to do it. And it's effective to help those that God has assigned for me to make an impact on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I tell people all the time, newness of life is not being compared with the, 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 the locust church around the corner or the one around the hill or the one in another city or another state. We are called to do something unique for God and we want to do it to the best of our ability to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want to fulfill my assignment. All right. Listen, Jimmy Carter said this. If you fear, listen at this. If you fear making anyone mad, then you ultimately probe for the lowest common denominator of human achievement. Please get this. I'm giving you some statements to help you that can be validated with the word. He's saying, in other words, if you are afraid of making people mad through and by achieving, then all you're going to do is look for the low way out. I don't want nobody talking about me, Pastor. We ask people many times to do certain things. Well, you know what they're going to say? What do you, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're that caught up in what they're saying, so you refuse to help us get something done for God because people might talk about you because people might call you the pastor's pet or this right here and that. Oh, my God. Listen, I serve my leader. I served him, me and my brother. We served him. And people talked about us, said, who, oh, my God, they just coming in the church. And now they always in pastor face and they and, and, and they the pastor's flunky. That's right. Get ready to hear that. They're going to call you the pastor's flunky. They're going to say you this. They're going to say you that. None of those things move me from doing my assignment and helping him. Because if they do, it's going to make you go to the lowest common denominator. You will never achieve great things if you cannot stand people talking about you. <laughs> they took it, baby. Oh, what they said doesn't mean anything. What they say doesn't mean anything. They can't stop you by what they said. No, they can hinder you, but they will not be able to stop you. I preached a message a long time ago at my brother church called hindered, but not stopped. They can slow down you. They can slow you down by running their mouth, but they will not be able to stop this achievement. Only you can do that by quitting, by giving up, by refusing to remain faithful to the call, faithful to the assignment. The faithful man shall abound in blessings. Proverbs 28 and 20. All right, but Nita Bellamy made this statement. The strongest influence you can have is achieved through your actions, not by your words. See, anybody can talk, but you're going to have to put up or shut up. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to show the devil you mean business. See, but a lot of people don't recognize. They get in the house of God, they get all excited. Oh, I, I never turn back. I'm going all the way. La, 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 la. 
And they don't know. The devil is going to send something to make you eat those words if you don't understand that your action speaks louder than words. Peter said, Lord, all may deny you, but I'll never deny you. Look what happened. Then they came after him, trying to sift him like wheat. Jesus told him it was coming. He said, Satan had desired to have you that he might sift you as wheat. But here's what Jesus said. I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Glory. Thank God. That's why any time when people are out front speaking the word and everything else, you got to be praying for them. You got to pray for me. I'm out here talking this word. Don't you know the devil don't like it? Oh, Henry Ford. Henry Ford said this. Even a mistake may turn out to be the one thing necessary to a worthwhile achievement. Listen at me. I know everybody that has ever succeeded and achieved in life other than Jesus has failed and had to keep right on moving. Jesus never failed. He dotted every I and crossed every T. But everybody else along the way, you're going to have some obstacles, some trials, some tests that are going to make you feel like a failure. You're not a failure. That situation failed, but you're not a failure. The only way you are a failure is if you quit and don't keep moving and don't keep pressing and going forward in God. Woo, glory to God. I said last week, God wants you to live. Not die, but live. And I spoke it by revelation to you that God said in his word, amen, through the psalmist, I will live and not die and declare the words of the Lord. But let me give you this scripture in Matthew 8, 21 and 22 that God showed me in the message Bible. And then I'll bring it to a close tonight. Matthew 8, 21 and 22 in the message Bible. Listen at this. Another follower said, master, excuse me for a couple of days, please. I have my father's funeral to take care of. Listen at this man. This man said, Lord Jesus, excuse me, please. I got to take care of my father's funeral. Listen at what Jesus said. That's why I told you that when one of your loved ones die, don't you die with them. Miss them. You're supposed to miss them if you love them. But don't die with them. You got to keep living. You got, I'm going to do all my living while I got blood running warm through my vein because I cannot afford to die and I'm still alive. I don't want to be a dead man walking. Listen to what he said. Jesus refused. Wait a minute. The man said, Jesus, excuse me for a few days. I got to bury my father. I got to go to my father's funeral to take care of this. Jesus refused. Listen to what Jesus said. First thing first. Your business is life, not death. Follow me, pursue life. Come on, y'all. This is Bible. That's what I'm called to do, preach the Bible. Not lean to my own understanding. Come on now. A lot of us would have been so mad at, at the preacher, at the pastor, we would have never came back to church no more. Amen. Amen. All we telling people is, wait a minute, don't die with your dead loved one. And people get upset about that. All we telling you is don't hang around the graveyard no more. Amen. Jesus, this man was trying to go to the funeral. Not the burial, the funeral. The funeral. Jesus, my daddy died. I got to go to the funeral. Jesus refused. First thing first, your business is life. Not death. Follow me. Pursue life. I remember my grandmother. She, she, uh, 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 when she died, as well as my granddaddy when they died. And, uh, they, the, most people in my family, they know I'm a pastor. They know my brother's a pastor. And they, they, they scheduled the funeral on Sunday. Now, I, they know, they, they, they contact, you know, hey, Van Irving, you know, you know, grandma died and everything else. I said, well, okay, that's fine. We, you know, uh, uh, Put the funeral at a certain time. Why? Because we have service on Sunday. Amen. I can let other people preach and everything. I know that. But I'm trying to give this to them 
so that they won't do it at the time that I'm supposed to be in the local assembly preaching and teaching the word. Well, you know, you got people that, oh, you know, no matter what, they're going to do what they want to do. And I tell them all the time, and they have family reunion. They do that same thing on family reunion. Have family reunion on Sunday, and they want you to rush out of the house of God to go and gather to eat some chicken. Come on, are you kidding me? And people need to be saved, and people need to be set free. And usually it's on a time. Every time I notice that whenever we, my wife and I, we stayed there and did the work of God, that people got saved or people got healed or people got delivered. See, the devil always trying to make us put God's stuff on the back burner and put his stuff first. No, you want a fa- you having a family reunion? Then don't do it on the time when I'm supposed to be in the house of God. That chicken, that potato salad, that cornbread, whatever it is, it can wait. Well, you know, your uncles and stuff going to be home. Well, your, your first cousin, they come home from Florida. Don't you want to see them? I say, yes, I want to see them. And if they want to see me, they'll wait till I get there. I'm coming, but I got to do God's stuff first. I'm going to get there, but I got to do God's stuff first. I'm coming. My wife and I, we're coming. But God's stuff cannot be put on the back burner and made to look unimportant. And y'all stuff, y'all drinking your beer, y'all out there cussing, you're playing cards. I'm going to come out there and be light to you. I'm going to come out there and be an example to you to show you that you can have a good time without all that. But I'm not going to rush God's stuff trying to do y'all stuff. Are you hearing me? My brother and I, we love basketball. We love seeing football games and stuff. But we ain't going to rush out of the house of God to my, we got to go see the Dallas Cowboys, even though the Dallas Cowboys are my favorite team. I ain't going to rush out of the house of God to my, I got to go see the Cowboys. Or I got to go see uh, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers or whatever. Amen. No, my elder and all the men and brother, we, we going to do God stuff first. God is first. Seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God, his righteousness, all these things shall be added. You don't have time to die. ta ta da ba 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 When death even trying to knock on your door, you tell death, hold up. Get back, death. I refuse to answer your call right now. I got life. I got life in me. I got to do life. I'm not dying yet. See? Hallelujah. Are you listening? That's what he said. Your business is life. What are we about? Life, life, life. The book that we wrote called Death, A Need to Understand. In this book, Death, A Need to Understand, what we're trying to help people do is live. To help them understand the real essence of your life. To understand that death is an enemy. It's not a friend. It's an enemy. To show them what the Bible says about it, that God is not plucking the flower, that God ain't just deciding to take somebody out that you love and care about. No, your business is life, not death. Follow me. Pursue life. Go after what? Life. I'm out of time. I got to quit. Thank you for watching tonight. Appreciate you so much. I'm going to pick right back up here next week as we study some more because I'm trying my best to help you understand that you are an overcomer and to know that whatever you got to face, you have what it takes to overcome all things. I'm training you in the secret to overcome all things, to let you know that supernatural achievements await you. There's something in your future that's bigger than your past that's bigger than your present, and it's something in your future that Satan, or your adversary, doesn't want you to lay hold of. But I'm going to help you get it. I'm going to help you be a supernatural achiever through going forward in God. God brought you out of darkness, out of Egypt, through the wilderness, and you are headed for the promised land. You can ready to go into a land flowing with milk and honey. You can ready to go to a land where there's no scarceness, There's no lack that you have more than enough. I know you've been struggling with some bills. I know you've been struggling with some financial challenges, 
But I'm here to tell you, you are coming out of that. Into the land of more than enough. Hallelujah. If God brought my wife and I through it and brought us to an abundance, I'm here to tell you, if he did it for us, he can do it for you. That the oil is on our head, coming down to the beard, to the skirt, and to the whole body. You are going to win. Watch what God does next. Watch if, oh, the Bible said it, after you suffered a while, mm, 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 the Lord going to strengthen and establish you and cause you to have more. Shout out again to all NOLCC members. Amen. A lot of you were checking in tonight and chiming in tonight. Thank you for being great Bible students. Want you to keep that same frame of mind when we go back into the local building. Amen. Keep that mind to study God's word, to get the whole of God's word. Amen. Because we need God's word in these times we're living in. Again, a shout out to all, amen, of you that are school teachers. Shout out to Pastor Susan Sharp and Shante White and all of those that are school teachers. Anybody that's a school teacher. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Susan retired now. That's right. But she was a school teacher. But all of you school teachers, thank you for working with the children. Pray. Pray for that little child that was misused by that school teacher. Amen. We, that's why we need some good. Huh? The principal, that the principal that patted that child. Amen. Pray that child. Again, this is mental, mental stuff that will try to mess up our children. And thank God that we got to pray for them. Again, happy anniversary, anniversary to Vernita and Dennis Battle. Three years. We celebrate you. And we thank God for you and a happy birthday. Amen. Again to Vanika. Happy birthday. Whose birthday was Monday and Sister Jean as well as Deacon Gaston is today. Send a special shout out to Deacon Gaston, you brethren and you saints. Amen. We have amen, a great, great one of uh, a great, great deacon. Amen. In the person of Deacon Bobby Gaston as well as a happy birthday to my brother-in-law, Frankie Reynolds. Happy birthday, bro. As well as a happy birthday to Veronica Nichols. We celebrate you, Veronica. We love you so much. And we know that God has kept you another year and keep moving forward in Jesus name. All right. OK. Yeah. Happy birthday to Pastor Joanne Knight. Her birthday is going to be Friday, May the 9th. Happy birthday, Pastor. I mean, I'm sorry. May the 7th. Pastor Joanne Knight. Happy birthday to you. Amen. As well as Mother Gaston. That's right. Wow. Mother Gaston's birthday is May the 8th. Y'all saints at Noonish of Life, write this down. Mother Gaston is May the 8th. She's getting ready to be 96 years old. 96. Can you imagine that? She got saved when she was 80. 80 years old. We baptized that lady. <laughs> wow. We Now she's 96. Amen. She's going to be 96 years old. What a blessing. Amen. All right. We're praying for uh, with it, Patricia Body and the uh, yeah, Patricia Body and the Brown family. We know that this will be your first first uh, first what? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Be Patricia Body's first year without her mom. And of course, this Sunday is Mother's Day. Amen. And uh, amen. Pastor Risa and myself, one of us going to share a good word. We're going to encourage you. Uh, in the name of the Lord. Amen. And anyone else who recently lost your mom, we're praying for you. We know this can be a challenging time, but guess what? You called to overcome that challenge. You called to win over that. That's right. You can win. You're going to be all right. You're going to be fine, fine, fine. As Pastor Reese got a song out that relates to that. It ain't on CD yet, but amen. You're going to be fine, fine, fine. Just trust God. Move forward. Again, don't die. Live. God called you to live. Enjoy the rest of your days. Amen. And live on the name of the Lord. If you are not saved, you desire to be saved, pick that phone up after this broadcast go off. Give us a call at 252-563-5382. Give us a call at 252-563-5382. We want to hear from you. As well as if you're watching these messages, these messages can be viewed right here again on Facebook. Uh, book live I mean, on Facebook as well as on YouTube. You can check us out and listen at the word of the Lord 
Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Hear it again. Hear it again. You can get some stuff. Don't forget to write down these times every Tuesday night, 730, every Thursday, 7 o'clock. That's right. This Thursday, we're going to be right here at 7 o'clock. And Sunday morning, we're going to be ministering the word of God to you at 1015. All right. Now, those of you who want to give and be a blessing to the ministry, and we appreciate all of you who give and support the ministry, as well as those of you who support my wife and I. Let me tell you what to do to give to the ministry, to give to NOLCC. What you need to do is write out a check or a money order, mail it to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. That address again is Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. Also, you can download the Give Plus Church app. Download the Give Plus Church app. Type in Newness of Life Christian Center or 27886 and Newness of Life Christian Center is going to pop up and you can sow a seed. Download the Give Plus Church app. Type in Newness of Life Christian Center or 27886 Newness of Life Christian Center going to pop up and you can sow a seed. We will appreciate it. The ministry will appreciate it. We got work to do for the Lord. We got to build a new sanctuary that can house everything that God wants us to do. Amen. But until then, we're right there at 936 Admiral Avenue. All right. Now to bless my wife and I personally, go to your cash app. Go to your cash app. Hit that dollar sign. Hit the letter R and the word determined. D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D. We are good ground. We know that God will bless you for it. Go to the cash app, hit the dollar sign, the letter R, and the word determined, D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D, amen. And we know that when whatever you sow to us, big or small, it's not small in the sight of God, that God is going to enlarge your territory. Oh, my God, he's going to do some stuff for you that only he can do. When we do the natural, he does the supernatural, all right? Now, again, you can order any of our books. We got 13 powerful books. We also have a wonderful CD. Wow, if you missed that message Sunday, oh my God, we played one of the songs up there called God is Good. That's song number four. And man, we had church Sunday morning. I'm telling you, we had a great time <laughs> hearing that great song put together by uh, my wife and the praise team. But anyway, to order any of our books, what you got to do is call the ministry at 252 252- 641-0098. It's on the screen. 252-641-0098. You can get the book called Discouragement. You can get the book called uh, Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize. And Deaf, I need to understand. And our latest book, our 13th book, is entitled Let the Prophet Speak, Show Us Our Way. Also, our books can be purchased on uh, Amazon, on uh Books a million, amen, um, and 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 uh, uh, yeah, pendium, all okay, all of those, amen. So you can get our books if, if if not from us, get it from Amazon. We don't care. We want you to get the material. That's what we want to do. Be a blessing to you. Again, thank you for watching tonight. You have a great great Tuesday, and get ready for Wednesday to be better than Tuesday. All right, and then don't forget to tune in and watch us Thursday at seven o'clock. Right here on Facebook Live, as the Lord said the same, we're going to be sharing a great word with you to bless your life. Have a blessed night. We love you.